All right, let's, uh, let's go to the next technique. So this is lead and twitch. This is the other one that we kind of talked about where we said, you know, how much are you leading the fish? Okay, this is, this is very similar to bonefish. It, yeah, so this would be the technique that if you've gone bone fishing, there are a lot of places where this is pretty effective. And to be honest with you, um, when you first start fly, this is an easier way to, to catch a fish on a fly, a carp on a fly, than, it, than the drag and drop. Because it's, it's just simpler. Lead the fish where you think it's going to be. Let the fly fall to the bottom. And then when the carp gets in within that 12-inch range, you just move the fly a little bit to get their attention. And a lot of times they'll get, they're going to come, come over and eat it. Um, using this technique, a lot of times I will use two flies, 18 inches apart, because it just gives me a bigger range where that carp can swim through that when I twitch the fly, they have a chance at seeing either of those two flies. It goes from 12 inches to, I mean, I, I put them 18 inches apart, it gives you about a two and a half foot area that, that if that carp comes through there and you twitch it, you can get their attention and they'll come over and they'll eat it. Um, yeah, just, just on the hook bend. Yeah. Now, I'll usually do different, um, but a lot of times it'll be like I'll use a cart maul on the front one, and then on the back one I'll use a cart maul without rubber legs. Like so, just a they call a backstabber. Um, so it might be real similar. Yeah. So if I'm gonna if I I, I will a lot of times go a slightly lighter lighter fly. So especially if I'm using dumbbell, I won't I won't ever do two dumbbell eyes. Um, so I'll do dumbbell and bead chain, or I might do bead chain and faux pearl, or bead chain and bead chain, faux pearl, faux pearl, but I don't ever do two dumbbell eyes. It's just too much commotion on the water. Um, but yeah. Yeah, so the front one would be my dumbbell fly. Yeah. I don't, I don't like to do this for drag and drop. There are guys that use this two, te two fly technique for drag and drop. Uh, the reason I don't is is again, it's so easy to line the fish and now you got two, that second fly, it becomes hard to keep track of both of those. And really with drag and drop, it's, it's all about dropping that fly in that area. Like to me, it's easier to focus that one fly on the accuracy where this is not as important. You're leading it and then letting the fish come over to it. And then you're, you're going to twitch it and get them to, uh, to take the fly. Um, and again, you're looking for the same things because in this, this case, you're almost not never going to see the fly. Not always. Sometimes I fish water that's clear enough and, and the lights conditions are right where I can see the fly. Love it. <laughs> the anticipation is you see the carp coming and you see your fly and, you know, it gets close enough and you just give it a little twitch and it does its little burst and it's fantastic. <laughs> I love that. Um, but a lot of times you can't see well enough to see the fly. So you're looking for those same movements that we've kind of seen before where they charge a little bit, they lift their head. They drop, they do something different. Um, you see that, and then you're going to, in, in that situation, you're going you're gonna to almost always uh, strip set because your line's already going to be tight. So you'd want to strip set there. Okay, so this one's a little longer, but again, I'm just trying to kind of show you this. There's, there's a fish feeding right up here. Um, And I don't know for sure where he's at or where my fly is, but you can just kind of see I'm kind of doing these little slow, just moving the fly just a little bit down here. And I'm waiting for some kind of reaction from him. Again, right? Anticipation is, is what's... <laughs> this is a smaller fish, but uh, yeah. So way ahead of him up here. Um, and this one's hard to see, but I think it ends up coming in like right through here. It's hard to see, but there's a little bit of movement right there. And yeah, that's the drone screwing up. <laughs> yeah, there's the fly right there. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, um, yeah, same thing here. Um, but let's, uh, well, it's not much left. We'll finish this real quick. This one actually hangs up up here for just a second. And it wasn't until I get it to pop loose 
Like a, this is just in a little rock, right? So I'm putting a little pressure on it, trying to get it. Finally pops loose, and then he shoots forward and, and eats it. So like I said, they'll, they'll move 12 inches sometimes to go eat something, but that's the most you're ever going to see. That is lead and twitch. Now, bef before we get into this one real quick, let's talk about where the situations that I use those first two techniques, drag and drop, and, and they account for 95% of the fish I catch. Right, here's those first two, primarily drag and drop and then lead and twitch. Um, it, really what it comes down to is if the, if the carp are extremely wary, extremely spooky, like anytime you cast near them, you seem like you're scaring fish, then I'm going to switch to the lead and twitch. Uh, you're always going to stimulate more strikes with drag and drop if you can perform it. If you can't perform it, for some reason, anytime you cast near a fish, they're scaring, then switch to lead and twitch. For drag and drop, you can use, we talked about two different styles of flies, the, the ones that you can move along the bottom and the ones that you really can't, okay? So for drag and drop, you can use either style of fly. Uh, will work. You can use the hybrid style and the headstand style. That'll work for drag and drop. Or you can use like the carp maul, backstabber, um, carp charlie, those kind. Um, for lead and twitch, you really don't want to use those headstand style. They're not, they're just not meant to move along the bottom. You're going to get hung up way more often. They're not going to move smoothly. Um, they don't work well when you have to move the fly. Um, that's where you use this lead and leave where they have something sticking up off the bottom is, is meant to get the attention like the, the San Juan worm tail. So you, same kind of thing as lead and twitch. I, I think I try to determine where the fish is moving to. I cast out to that spot and then I don't move it. And I wait to see if I can see that carp do anything that looks like an eat motion. And I will tell you right now that I'm, a, I'm rare in that I don't do this and I don't really like this that much. Um, I have caught fish doing this. Yeah, there, it works, but it's just not, it's not the style I like. For me, it's not. Uh, so I don't end up doing this very often. Again, though, if they're very spooky, leading, leading and leaving is a good way to, to get them to take. And then, you know, you kind of have to guess again when you think or, or watch for the body language of the eat. It, it's less obvious when you're doing it this way. Now, sometimes I had a really good fish on the Missouri River um, that I did a lead and leave. Great fish. I had no idea my fly was there. <laughs> I'm watching a different spot. And he come, picks it up and starts running. And I'm like, oh, crap. <laughs> sometimes they'll suck something in and hook themselves, right? So it, they, they will do that sometimes. <laughs> but yeah, uh, lead, that, so that's lead and leave. 